Good morning and welcome. Just to let you know, we're making a few changes here because of the COVID uh, uptick with the recent Omicron variant. And so please be safe. Know that you're perfectly fine to worship at home. We will be open on Sunday mornings and Wednesday mornings for those that choose to be here. But please mask um, and uh, know that we will have the doors open for good ventilation. Let us pray. Eternal Father, you gave your incarnate Son the holy name of Jesus to be the sign of our salvation. Plant in every heart, we pray, the love of him who, who is the Savior of the world, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given him by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Words mean things. That's one reason why you hear me talk about etymology so much, the roots and inherent meanings of words. Words are where I live my life, consuming them, sharing them. I love breaking them down and seeing their ingredients. It's like when you taste something new and you try to pick out the ingredients that the cook used, even though your mouth is being overwhelmed by the mixture and the new interactions that the recipe created. Even more than words, though, names are so important. One of the greatest burdens as new parents was naming our new children. And for both of our kids, we narrowed it down to a handful before they were born. Our oldest, when born, was premature, and she was almost six hours old before we could even see her. Uh, there were a troubled births uh, that night, more than just hours. And a nurse came in and asked what we had decided to name our child, and Stephanie, obviously irritated, said curtly, I'm not going to name her before I hold her. And because of the shift change, the nurse was not aware of this and helped remedy the situation immediately. And once we held this precious one, our guts confirmed it independent of one another, and we named our child. Now, as an English teacher, I love looking up the meanings of the characters' names and how we shape identity with the names authors pick. Some are for the meaning of them. Some are for a feeling. Think of it. Would Ebenezer Scrooge be a Scroogey if his name were not Scrooge? Think on your name. What meaning and purpose does it give you? Now, my given name is Jeffrey, even though everybody calls me Rock, and Jeffrey means God's peace. But very few of you ever call me that, much less even knew it. A nickname was given to me in college, and it stuck. In my 50s, I still use it. It has become an identity. It's become my self-perception. Rock, and I had it before Dwayne Johnson ever started using it, it was, was and is my name. In Jesus' day, one often kept family names, so this angelic imperative was different. For both Jesus and his cousin John, the messengers declared the names they were to be called. Names mean things. This was important. The holy name of Jesus comes from the Hebrew name Yeshua, which is based on the Semitic root of the word that means to deliver or to rescue. In Hebrew, the name is often written as Joshua. In short, it could be Yahweh saves or simply God saves. Focusing on the meaning of the names is culturally different. A fascinating true new translation of the New Testament has just come out that makes this very clear. Now, when people do translations of Scripture, they have a few choices to make. It's either going to be a literal translation, word for word, like the New Revised Standard uh, translation is for the most part. If so, it's often clunky and can make no sense in new culture. Think of a society that doesn't have sheep, never heard of sheep, never saw sheep. And when Jesus says, I'm the good shepherd, how does that one translate that? Do you find a cultural equivalent of a herd animal, llamas, reindeer? 
If you do more than that, it becomes more of a thought translation. It's very different than as the translator's understanding, biases, and opinions come into play with that. So I was excited to hear about this new translation looking at our native populations. It's called a First Nations version of the New Testament and writes to the indigenous peoples of our country. And it follows the tradition of saying the meaning of a person's label, their name. In our culture, names are mostly just sounds. We don't think on what they mean when we say them. And reading the scripture with the name spelled out like in Native American culture, it gives a powerfully different reading. The reading from today's gospel shows this. When the messengers, angels, Returned to the spirit world above, the shepherds said to each other, Let us go this and see this thing the Creator has told us. So they hurried to the village of the chief much loved one, David, and found bitter tears, Mary. And he gives sons, Joseph, and the child, who was just as they were told, and he was lying in a feeding trough. The shepherds began to tell everyone what they had seen and heard about the child, and all who heard the story were amazed. Bitter tears kept all these things hidden in her heart and wondered what all this would mean. The shepherds returned to the fields, giving thanks to the great spirit for the wonders they had seen and heard. Adding the meaning into each and every sentence makes us listen again for the first time. It breaks the rhythms we expect. It makes us ponder the narrative in every word. Jesus' name becomes creator sets free in this translation. Jerusalem becomes village of peace. Even the name of the Gospel of Luke is enhanced as it's called Shining Light Tells the Good Story, with Luke's emphasis of bringing the light of the God into all the world, even to the Gentiles. This fits so well. Now, it might be easy for us to gloss over the meaning of what we talk about because it's old hat to us. Most of us have heard the good news so long and so intensely that what we forget how good it is, and even more, that it is news in the first place to so many. We need to remind ourselves of how precious and miraculous what we share with the world is. One of the great gifts of the story we tell is the intentionality and patience of God. As our Galatians reading opens that we weren't able to share this morning, it says, When the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son. Like waiting for dough to rise, the divine waited for the perfect time and place to insert the leverage of grace to impact the world. In naming the baby Jesus, a declaration was being made. Yeshua, God saves, creator sets free. Jesus, however you say it, with every invocation of his name, we make a proclamation. In the Roman Empire, the phrase at the time of Jesus' birth is Caesar is Lord. One of the earliest creeds of the church went against that. Jesus is Lord, they would boldly declare, throwing down the gauntlet to the powers that be and to the state of the world they found themselves in. In Antioch, in an attempt to mock the early church, the followers of the way, as they called it, first started being called Christians, little Christ, little messiahs, or little messiah complexes is more like it. It was set in derision and used to belittle them, but names mean thing, and it has become an identity and it has become our self-perception. In the name of God saves Messiah, Jesus, the Christ, we see our role in the world as continuing down through history, the work he started and left for us to do. We take on the name of Jesus and we do what we do in his name. We pray in his name, we serve in his name, and today we honor the holy name of Jesus, the name given him in the temple at his circumcision when he was first dedicated to God. We do the same when we baptize people, right where I'm standing naming them and dedicating them to God. I say the name they will be called and mark them as Christ's own forever. One of the beautiful promises to believers in John's revelation is in the letter to the church at Pergamum. Let anyone who has an ear to listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. To everyone who conquers, I will give some of the hidden manna and I will give a white stone and on the white stone is written a new name that no one knows except the one who receives it. That promise is in Revelation 2. Think on it. God has a special name for you, one that only God knows, a love name, a name for a beloved. You may have or had one with your special someone at some point. And God feels the same way about each and every one of us. As we ponder this special, this precious, this holy name, may we appreciate it and glory in it as we can. As the old hymn sings out, 
Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. God bless you this day. May we bless his holy name in 2022. May we remember the Christ child who was named on that special day. God bless you. If you choose to come to church in person, please be safe. We will have the doors open, like I said, for good ventilation, so dress warmly. Um, as of now, we will be following um, Sunday mornings and Wednesday mornings for our worship. All other activities of the church is uh, suspended or moved online for the foreseeable future until the COVID numbers come dramatically down. Thank you for being with us. And also, if you ever have any questions, um, please contact the church or me. Um, and we will let you know what's going on. The uh, church also follows the Hanover Public Schools for our office on Wednesday morning. So if uh, the weather turns, know that to just uh, if it's a weekday, check on the Hanover Public Schools and that'll tell you if we're here or not. Anyways, God bless. Have a great day. Happy New Year and blessings as we continue the 12 days of Christmas. Amen. <laughs>